Black athletes being locked out to now claims of racist culture in pro sports, the history of athletes of color in America is a battered one. BNC correspondent Unser Hassan has a look at the history of black athletes in the NFL. The NFL remains rife with racism, particularly when it comes to hiring and retention of black head coaches, coordinators, and general managers. That statement is from the opening pages of Brian Flores' class action lawsuit against the league. Flores was fired as the head coach of the Miami Dolphins three years into his five-year contract. Flores alleges that race is at the center of his firing and that racism is endemic in the NFL. In the lawsuit, Flores states, in certain critical ways, the NFL is racially segregated and is managed much like a plantation. Its 32 owners, none of whom are black, profit substantially from the labor of NFL players, 70% of whom are black. I think the notion of, of race and you know racism is, is pervasive when we talk about um, the coaching dynamic and even the, the structure of the NFL. There's Akila carter Franique is executive director of the Institute for the Study of Sport, Society and Social Change at San Jose State University. She too is critical of the lack of black coaches and owners as addressed in the lawsuit. There's only one black head coach in the NFL, Four teams have a black offensive coordinator, and just 11 teams, or 34%, employ a black defensive coordinator. And there are only six black general managers in the NFL. The lawsuit also traces the history of black players and coaches in the NFL. It began in the 1920s, but it wasn't until 1946 that black players re-entered professional football. The LA Rams were forced to integrate at least one black player to comply with the Supreme Court ruling to play in a publicly funded venue. The lawsuit alleges that it took 40 years after integration for teams to genuinely accept black players at quarterback, such as Warren Moon and Randall Cunningham, and to hire Art Shell as the first black coach, and 54 years to hire Ozzie Newsom as a black general manager. And there has never been a black NFL commissioner or team owner. The notion of racism is still pervasive. The notion of stereotypes of black intellect um, is still very pervasive. And it's one that continues to serve as a stereotype and serve as a barrier to obtaining positions uh, of leadership. Then comes the Rooney Rule, which is the NFL's attempt at diversity by forcing teams to interview at least two external minority candidates for open head coaching positions. Flores claims he was put through sham interviews just to meet compliance. His lawsuit alleges that black candidates are being interviewed to comply with the Rooney Rule rather than in recognition of their talents. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a culture that also has to be changed within the NFL to realize um, about some of these historic isms that um, plague our greater society. But again, we also see this in the sports space. The lawsuit also contends that black coaches are paid less and fired more often than less successful white coaches. The NFL says Flores' 58-page lawsuit and its sweeping allegations are without merit. Carter Frenick admits Flores has a tough case, but an important one. There's um, efforts being made. It's still slow moving, but we have to keep working forward. And this is one step that may bring forth that attention to make those changes. In San Francisco, on Hassan for BNC.